UW 360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. On today's UW 360, a virtual world created by doctors at UW Medicine to help burn patients through their grueling recoveries. Plus, catching up with the Heward brothers. Find out how two of the greatest quarterbacks in Husky football history are now the faces and voices for UW. Also, the technology breakthrough that could revolutionize the field of robotics. And how musical theater is taking center stage at the University of Washington, all on today's UW 360. From the University of Washington, welcome to UW 360. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Doctors often describe burn pain as the worst pain imaginable. But for the past 16 years, burn patients have been getting some relief thanks to a virtual reality game developed by researchers here at the University of Washington. Stacy Sakamoto shows us how Snow World is being used by Harborview Medical Center and burn centers all across the country. Oh yeah, this is the hard one right here. Try to get them all. Can you get them all? This is no ordinary video game. This is Snow World, a virtual reality game that helps manage the pain of burn patients while they undergo wound care. I think other people will kind of like it too. It was developed by two University of Washington researchers, psychology professor David Patterson. You know, there's still a lot of work to be done figuring out. And Hunter Hoffman, director of the Virtual Reality Research Center at the Human Photonics Lab. You have a strong sense of being present in the virtual world but it also uh, is quite uh, calming and soothing, and it's the opposite of fire. That's the key. It's one of the best technologies that we know of that can really capture a lot of attention. When a patient's going through a painful procedure and they find themselves immersed in the virtual world, snow world, uh, there's just less attention to focus on their pain. Patterson and Hoffman were introduced by a mutual friend who thought Hoffman's virtual reality work could complement Patterson's research of pain management. The result was Snow World, which has helped hundreds of patients across the country, including Max Dantzler. I liked it a lot because I am a gamer myself. Dantzler was seriously burned while camping when he fell asleep next to his campfire. He awoke to find his boot on fire. Wound care used to be an excruciating procedure for all burn patients. But during Dantzler's three weeks at Harborview Medical Center, Snow World helped block much of the pain. Looking at your burns being worked on is kind of anxiety provoking to begin with. So the fact that the VR system blocks your view, we have found helps, helps them concentrate the, their attention. Really, they have no choice. We do have some patients that will go in the virtual world and They'll be totally oblivious that the nurses are working on them, and they'll, they'll finish up and, and uh, they'll come out of Snow World and they say, have you started yet? This one just uses a smartphone. Hoffman believes that new, lower-priced virtual reality goggles will make Snow World accessible to more medical facilities and their patients. This virtual reality used in medical centers is one of the best examples of how University of Washington can take cutting edge technology and hard science that's on one part of the campus and go across the street almost the same day and reduce patient suffering. The sky's the limit as far as developing worlds and we're, we're really at the tip of the iceberg. Researchers have also used virtual reality to help patients with spider phobias and post-traumatic stress disorder. Still ahead on UW360, reinventing the equivalent of the human hand through robotics. The amazing progress made by UW scientists who are working to transform the world of robotics. And the healing partnership of medicine and art. We take a tour of the powerful artwork at Harborview Medical Center as UW360 continues. The following UW360 story is made possible by the generous support of BECU. BECU, more than just money.
Welcome back to UW360. It's something most of us take for granted, the amazing dexterity of the human hand and the impressive amount of brain power it takes to navigate that hand. For decades, scientists have been trying to figure out how to apply that complicated movement to machines, an ambitious dream that a UW team is now marching towards with their incredible robotic hand. When you see like how those all the muscles are firing up, so it's like a dance between all of them put together. Vakash Kumar is at the forefront of something spectacular. And all these joints effectively are connected via these tendons to the muscles over here. For the past several years, the doctoral student has been working here in the UW Movement Control Lab to create the functional equivalent of a human hand with robotics. So you see each one of these joints contracting and expanding one at a time. Vakash and his team have custom built one of the most highly capable five-fingered robot hands in the world. It can not only perform dexterous manipulation, but also learn from its experience without needing humans to direct it. As you can see in this demonstration video, with each attempt, the robot hand gets better and better at spinning the tube, thanks to machine learning algorithms that help it both model the basic physics involved in the movement and then plan which actions it should take to achieve its goal. It's an incredible leap in technology that brings with it endless possibilities, potentially allowing a robot to handle intricate tasks that may be too hazardous for human hands. Someone can take this particular approach and scale it to being a prosthesis devices. Someone can take this approach and convert it into a space exploration marine exploration or disaster situation. So the possibilities are endless, but at the moment we are trying to focus on the fundamental units which underlies all these approaches. Vakash and his team have demonstrated local learning with this robotic hand, showing it can keep repeating a specific movement until it masters it. Now their next step is to demonstrate global learning meaning the robot can figure out how to do a task it hasn't seen before. He compares it to teaching a baby to talk. The way I see this is what we are doing right now is we know how to make one single word. We don't know how that word is put in context when you look at a sentence. We don't even know how to put all these words together to make a meaningful sentence. So you can see, like you can imagine these are the fundamental blocks and if we sequence them properly together, then we can solve complicated tasks. Well, like this is probably like While a technology is still in infant stages, it's already an impressive like accomplishment for this young researcher and his team, a dream project he's lived and breathed for years. It's like a baby to me, like there's not a day I don't spend time with it. Yet even though it's hard to think about possibly having to part with his baby after graduation, he also says he can't wait to see what happens when scientists around the world begin to collaborate on this work. That is the part that I'm excited about, is like how do we take our expertise and combine it with the expertise of other people and see what are the possibilities or how far we can push this thing. Vakash and his team recently presented their latest results in a paper at the International Conference on Robotics and Automation in Sweden. Their work was met with great acclaim, and it even won the award for Best Manipulation Paper, which is said to be one of the toughest categories at that conference. Okay, now from science to the arts. UW has a renowned school of drama, a school of music, and a dance program. And now, for the first time in more than 150 years, the three disciplines are being combined into a single program for one of America's oldest art forms, musical theater. Austin Seedentoff reports. Five, six, seven, eight. Music. These are the three ingredients that must come together to make musical theater. And at the UW, they are the three schools that have contributed their resources and faculty to make UW's first musical theater program. 
five, six, seven, eight. It's such a hard art form. And you have to be a different person while you're singing and dancing. It's funny because I, I initially wanted to just become an actor. I never considered myself a singer or a dancer. Um, I actually thought that was kind of a career wrecking thing to do. One smile and suddenly nobody else. I would say my biggest challenge coming into school was uh, dancing. But when you're doing it for two hours, three times a week, you can. In 10 weeks, you see so much growth. Everything has to pop, especially at the beginning. One, boom, singular sensation. Every little step she takes, ba da 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 ba da one, boom. We physically and vocally challenge them um, in a place that I don't think they've ever been in. As young performers, they think that they have reached their peak at one point, and our job is to make sure that they've never reached that peak and that they just keep going farther and farther and farther. We are a BA that is really kind of focused on technique and is really focused on creating good work. Watch your trio when you're coming down. The Musical the Theater program offers students an incredible opportunity to learn musical theater at a technical and intense level while receiving a liberal arts education in the middle of the Seattle arts community. I think all of that stuff kind of makes it really intense and I think that because of that is bringing a, a, a different crop of students. These students who are not afraid to kind of just roll up the sleeves and kind of dig into the dirt. And that means being a little vulnerable and also having strong opinions. So they're not just kind of following somebody else's footsteps, but they're actually kind of saying, oh no, I'm going to take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I'm going to create something new. There's a lot of opportunities here, and I'll get the chance to go around and do stuff. There's some students that are, they're hungry and they're excited and they're scared and they're willing and they are, uh, they're coming prepared. They might not realize it, in, uh, maybe not all of them right now, but I can see some growth that has happened here in this past three years. I mean, I think our students are, they're gonna shake the Seattle community. Some of these students and grads are already working in musicals, so keep your eyes peeled to see what kind of impact these Huskies are having on Seattle Musical Theater next time you hit the town to see a show. The program students are already making a name for themselves. Some of them have even had to take time off from their studies to perform in shows around Seattle at venues like the Fifth Avenue Theater. Still ahead, we tour the powerful art collection at Seattle's Harborview Medical Center. And we catch up with two of the UW's most famous quarterbacks, the Heward brothers. See how they're still deeply connected to their school, both on air and in person, as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW360. The name Heward is basically considered football royalty here in the Pacific Northwest. Damon and Brock Heward were standout athletes at the University of Washington in the 1990s. Both were starting quarterbacks. Both went on to play in the NFL. Years later, both still maintain deep ties to the UW. And as Stacy Sakamoto found out, they are both still purple to the core. Here's corner position, not Washington at all. By the reverse, comes up, great open field tackle, shot stop. In this league, it's mano a mano and it's face to face, and this guy is brought in for that close combat. I know why you and your dad can't watch games together. You were kind of Debbie Downer yesterday, howdy. Two decades after their Husky playing days ended, Damon and Brock Heward still live and breathe Husky football. Both were starting quarterbacks at the University of Washington in the 90s before going on to play in the NFL. Now Damon is Husky Football's Director of External Relations. This is awesome for me to come back full circle to a, a university that was so good to me as a student athlete. You know, so many great memories in Husky Stadium and on campus at the business school. And now to come back and, and, and work as a UW employee you know, all these years later, it's fun. I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. He's also the color analyst for Husky football radio broadcasts, while Brock is a color analyst on TV with ESPN. 
you know, I have a face for radio. He's the TV guy. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. He's got the better hair. He's got the hair for TV. I'm trying to hang on. Brock also hosts a popular morning radio show on 710 ESPN Seattle. I don't think Damon and I ever said, boy, we're going to be on radio and TV one day. It just so happens that competitively, the outlet now at our age, at 40-somethings, manifests itself through the media. The two reminisced during a recent photo shoot for Columns magazine. Class is the word I, I'm going to use to describe Brock. I think he, he brings people together. It doesn't matter what it is. As broadcasters, they've called the same game for TV and radio. They were the first set of brothers to start for two different NFL teams on the same Sunday. Brock for the Seahawks and Damon for the Dolphins. How are we doing, folks? Damon Heward. Oh, my. Damon's friendship with former teammate Dan Marino has led to Passing Time, a winery the two opened in Woodenville. More than 600 people turned out for their release party to sample wine and meet the owners. And we thought, what a perfect name for the winery. It's what you do with your family, friends, drinking wine, hanging out, passing time. But it's also, when it's third down in the red zone, we got a score, <laughs> You're right. it's, it's passing time. time. <laughs> Both Damon and Brock credit their parents for instilling in them and their youngest brother, Luke, the importance of education and hard work. The brothers still laugh about the first time that Damon was asked to babysit. Damon was 13 or 14 and Brock a few years younger. We got into an argument and he locked himself in the bathroom and he wouldn't let me in. So I run around to the back window where the bathroom is and I start pounding on the glass. The glass shatters and pieces of glass go into Brock's face and he's bleeding. He tried to ruin my TV face by punching out the window so the glass would shatter and I'd be scarred forever and that he could do TV. Yes, that's exactly what he did. They didn't let me babysit ever again. They also have fond memories of the advice that Damon gave Brock as the younger brother was making his college decision. There's nothing better than to be a Husky. And some 20 years later, there's again, a lot of merit to that. That's good. That's great. Oh, cool. See. Let's see. That's the last shot. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's a nice shot. Purple is just a, a part of our lives and uh, always will be. Damon and Brock's youngest brother, Luke, is on the coaching staff of Georgia State University. And their father, Mike, was the longtime coach at Puyallup High School, where all the boys played football. Still ahead, the healing power of art. See how UW Medicine continues to lead the way in the art and healthcare movement as UW 360 continues. Welcome back, everyone. If art is therapy, then UW Medicine patients are in very good hands indeed. For more than 40 years, UW Medicine has been a leader in the nation's art and healthcare movement. Harborview Medical Center, UW Medical Center, Northwest Hospital, and UW Neighborhood Clinics all boast impressive works of art and artistic programs for their patients and staff to enjoy. We recently toured the artwork at Harborview Medical Center and saw firsthand how UW Medicine has taken the art of healing to a whole new level. There's so much to look at. Tucked inside one of the country's top trauma centers lives an unexpected treasure, an impressive collection of artwork. I do find myself stopping to look at the art. And if I see something that I think is absolutely amazing, I take a picture and I send it to my sister who um, is an artist. Catherine Martin is a longtime patient at Harborview who's on the waiting list for a kidney transplant. She's been traveling these halls for years and is still surprised and delighted by what she finds. Every corner of this hospital, there is art and there's something to see and, you know, be surprised by. Here at Harborview, art is everywhere. Where you eat, where you walk, tucked behind wheelchairs and medical carts, overhead. Here's one. Even underhead literally woven into patients' lives in these hand-embroidered pillowcases called the Dream Project. And so you can rest your head easily on this pillow and have a pleasant dream and wake up better in the morning. 
Peggy Weiss is the director of the UW Medicine Art Program. Every piece, I love every piece. Every piece is thoughtfully selected and displayed by Peggy and her team, including these works by UW Professor of Ceramics and beloved local artist, Akio Takamori. It really just dignifies patients. It makes patients feel like somebody here understands them and cares enough about them to make sure their environment is appropriate and welcoming and wonderful. I like the symmetrical patterns to it, I like the colors. As the chair of rehabilitation at UW Medicine, Dr. Peter Esselman is continually impressed by the healing power of art. I think it has an impact on patients and families more than we would even recognize. Kimberly Koenig was definitely inspired this collar was um, to protect my neck after the surgery, so I say that Harborview saved my neck. Now healed and at home, she shows us how she was inspired by the artwork at Harborview to transform her once despised neck brace into a bejeweled crown, which now adorns a floor of the hospital to hopefully inspire other patients. This is a symbol of strength, transformation, healing, treasure, and health. Just down the hall from Kimberly's piece, Catherine Martin admires one of her favorite works. When you think about the journey that the turtles make to reproduce and the fact that they're carrying the babies, it just seems to be oh, very kind of nurturing. A nurturing respite in an unexpected place, helping soothe the soul so the body can heal. It makes you feel valued because art is valuable. And when you have something to look at besides the walls and your illness, it is quite healing. The UW Medicine Art Program doesn't just include works of art, but acts of art as well. Artists perform, present, and teach workshops on all kinds of artistic topics to patients at UW Medicine facilities to further enhance their healing process. For more information, just head to the link on our website. And that does it for this edition of UW360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.